Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Multifamily Legacy Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Peterson. And today we got a really cool, we are in the third part of a series, The Good, Bad, and the Ugly of Sierra Point. And today's going to be a really cool little uh, episode where we have um, my students um, that are very successful in their own right. So we have uh, Waleska Inglesia and uh, Scott Dilly of Greenstone Capital. Um, they came in and they did their first. So th these are very successful single family fix and flippers, and they do a little wholesaling as well. Uh, been, been in business for a good amount of time and really, truly crushing it. Who decided to like take the journey to the multifamily side? And by the way, um, they got this first deal under contract and they didn't have any websites. They had no experience. They actually ha didn't even underwrite any properties, right? They've never under underwritten a deal at all until this deal came on their lap. Um, they didn't have any business cards. So like, you know, a lot of people are listening right now, you know, say, oh, I gotta get all these things going on and I gotta get all this stuff before I start. It's simply not true. Scott Dilly and Waleska Iglesias, they took action. They jumped out of the plane without the parachute and started doing the things that were needed to be able to jumpstart their uh, process of getting their first multifamily deal. And guess what? It worked, right? It's not rocket science. It can happen and it will happen and it can happen to you, my friend. That little piece that you're missing is right there on the tip of success but you've got to go out there and go take it. You got to go grab it. That's what Scott and Waleska did. They didn't wait. They didn't dilly dally. They just went out for, you know, for it. And guess what? Things happen when you set yourself in motion. And so I uh, really want to, I'm looking forward to, to uh, having Scott and Waleska on the show. But before we do that, a word from our sponsors. At Kahuna Investments, we partner with passive investors to create award-winning communities families love to call home. If you want to learn more about our company and our process, go to www.kahunainvestments.com and click the deal room. All right, so we're back. So listen, this episode's going to be really good because, you know, you saw my, the first, you know, it was the good. Our last episode was, you know, kind of the bad, all the things that went wrong. And today we're going to sum it up with kind of this whole deal and um, how it came to fruition from Scott and Waleska's point of view, because this is their first multifamily deal. And so it's very fresh and raw. And we'll let them talk about all the things that went good and bad and how we ultimately did a, a wonderful thing and bought this deal. So uh, guys, let's welcome Scott and Waleska to the show. Hey, Scott Waleska, welcome to the show. Hey, okay. Corey. Thanks for having us. Good, good. So uh, really cool about, I'm excited about this episode just because, uh, you know, we just did the um, the good and the bad, and, and this is not the ugly section. This is the one that uh, is the real life of taking um, some very successful, you guys are both successful in your own right, in the single family space. And um, let's, I'll let you guys just quickly introduce uh, both yourselves and, um, and kind of what you guys have been doing, because you've got a remarkable story and you've been very successful in the single family uh, business that you've been in. So let's go let you start. So I'm Oleski Iglesias. I'm a broker here in Salt Lake in Utah. Um, have been in real estate for 17 years now, started traditionally, you know, with traditional real estate. Then when the market crashed, I went on to doing short sales then on to flips, and that's what I've been doing ever since. Flips, and of course, traditional stuff for friends and family, but the majority is flips, and that's what I've been doing here. Yeah, rock and roll. And Scott, you guys, how long have you guys been partnered for? Seven years. Yeah. How did you guys meet? Uh, well, Les, do you want to take that one on? <laughs> no. No, you go ahead. Go ahead, Scott. <laughs> so how we met is, uh, let's see. Well, let's go working with a gentleman that we both knew. He left to go to another market. Um, and they had wholesale a deal to me previously. And that's right. how I had been introduced to Waleska because this mutual friend had wholesaled me a flip. So when he left, um, 
I had a, a property on the market and Waleska had a buyer. So she put an offer on one of my flips with one of her buyers. And, uh, you know, they didn't perform. They made me fix stuff on my flip, include cutting trees, which was unnecessary. And then they backed out of my deal. So it was not a, a very good first impression. But anyway, um, after that, we had uh, just talked on the phone and uh, I knew that her business partner had left. Um, I had ended a relationship with my business partner. So uh, we were both doing the same thing and that was flipping short sales. Yep. And uh, so we just met and decided to, to join forces. Yeah. And it's been really well. You guys have done really well in Salt Lake and, uh, and truly have, have crushed it. Um, and now you guys are entering in a new phase of the, uh, the portfolio of which you guys are adding to it, still doing your single family fix and flip. Um, but you guys came to me and said, Hey, uh, Corey, we want to learn multifamily. And I got to tell you, you guys uh, not only picked it up quick, but went to town fast. And I would love to hear about how you guys found Sierra Point. And he wants, he wants to go with that. You got, Scott, you want to? Yeah, sure. I'll take that piece. Um, yeah, so we've been involved with Corey for um, just over a year um, in his mastermind. And, you know, we had checked out his boardroom, I think, about two years ago. And unfortunately, we didn't take any action. I wish we had have done something back then. Um, but in the, back in January, uh, we were attending, January, February, I think it was, we were attending one of Corey's masterminds. And, uh, you know, just one of the things that, Corey had taught us was, hey, you need to contact a broker in your local, in the area you want to work in and go meet them. So um, prior to getting to the event, I had reached out to a broker in Tucson, which was one of the markets we had identified during our one-on-one -on -one with Corey as a market that we wanted to work in. So um, I sent an email out to the broker and uh, asked if he would be willing to meet with us and just said, hey, we're going to be in town on this specific day. Uh, would you have, you know, time to meet with us uh, for over breakfast? And, uh, you know, would you be willing to share any deals? And he responded, yes, he would meet with us. So um, what we did was the day before that we're supposed to attend Corey's meeting, we headed down to Tucson and uh, we had breakfast with him. Um, at that particular meeting, he brought two deals with him and showed us the two deals and, um, he took us on a tour of one of those deals after lunch. And it was at that tour after lunch, uh, he brought a third deal. And uh, he told us, hey, here's another deal that I have. I don't have it signed up. Um, you know, we're thinking we're going to get it signed up, but see if you're interested in this particular deal. So he gave us that deal um, to look at. And we went back to the mastermind. And we had a number of people there help look at the numbers, underwrite it. Corey underwrote it there. Um, we determined and, by and the I'm, numbers. I'm going to pause you for just a minute because I want to go back and break down that for just a minute. So I want everybody to hear what, what just happened because this is so important. Like you guys did exactly what I teach, which is, hey, go find some people, uh, brokers in areas you want to work with, and then go have break some bread with them, right? You had breakfast. Now, you had and on that at that breakfast, what did you guys talk about at that meeting? Like, who, what was going on? What was the conversation like? Yeah, um, we didn't talk anything about real estate. We asked the broker about him, and I swear, right, Walaski, he probably talked for forty-five minutes about him and his family. We didn't talk any real estate. He yeah. told us did he like cars or something like that? Fast cars. Yeah, he likes cars. He told us he grew up in Wisconsin. He told us his life story and just like really we, we didn't talk real estate at all we just got to know the broker and so at the end of that meeting that breakfast he felt good enough now he brought a couple deals to that meeting right is what you said right yeah. yeah but and then so is he and so then he was already planning hey listen i got some open time what are you guys doing uh this afternoon maybe i'll go show you let's go meet and i'll show you this property yeah yeah um he asked you know it, it was a pretty, um, yeah, he basically said that. You got time after lunch? We said, yeah. He moved some things around, and he met us at one of the properties after lunch and took us on a tour of the property. Yeah, yeah, to show us one of the ones he had brought us in the morning. Okay. Yeah. One of the, yeah, yeah. ones so that were had, on the market already. He had yeah. two deals, and he's like, hey, I'll bring this one. And then, uh, and then, but on that way to that property, he actually got a deal, and he's like, but I got this one. 
I don't have it locked up. I mean, he didn't have it signed by the seller. So he showed you a off market deal. No one has even seen this deal. Correct. Right. Correct. How cool is that? Like, Very cool. That was just yeah. from like, I went there, I showed up, I played the game. I got to know somebody and <laughs> three potential deals show, show up while you're there. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So that, that particular problem we met him at, um, you know, it was pretty rough in not a real good area. And that's when he showed us the other one. And so after that meeting, we drove by Sierra Point afterwards by ourselves. Okay. So he had, he said he had this, but let's go take a quick little drive by. We don't disrupt it. We don't do anything weird. Just here's that property. Here's where it's at. And you're like, oh, this is in a better spot, right? Yep. Okay. And so from there, now the next day you're coming to the mastermind. And I remember that. Because uh, you're like, hey, well, let's just look at this deal. Let's see if the numbers work. Yeah. And then we punch all the numbers in and we're like, dude, I think this is a deal. Yep. And I was like, call the guy up and get it locked up. Yeah, we so, sent an, L an LOI right then and there. And yeah, we sent the LOI that, that evening. We sent him the LOI. Um, yeah, and, I mean, he's, he sent us a pricing sheet and he – He's, and I called him up and I said, okay, where do we need to be? And he told us where we need to be. And I, I kind of tried to give some pushback, but it was like, hey, if you want the deal, this is what you pay. This is the earnest money. If you don't want to do that, that's no big deal. But if you don't, I'll shop it somewhere else and I'll get those numbers. Mm -hmm. So he gave us kind of like, here's what it is. Now, yep. just so everybody knows, this broker is not just any ordinary broker in Tucson, Arizona. He probably does what? 75% of the big business transactions in that market? Yeah, he's, he's the... It's not more. It's not more. Yeah, he's probably the he's, biggest broker in Tucson. 100 doors plus, he's the, he's the big guy. Yeah. So, by the way, this is the power of relationships. So, how he got... How uh, Scott and Wesley got that guy is I have a good friend that's a Bercadia rep, and we're not going to say the broker's name, but I have a great Bercadia lender that then found the Bercadia uh, broker and made the connection for Scott and Willaska. So by leveraging people, by the way, is like the best way to get in the door, right? And that really made your lunch and breakfast so much better because it was a quality uh, referral or yeah. handoff, right? So he was way more apt to talk to you as, hey, you guys can do deals. Yeah. And now it helped also that you guys have not been, you know, this is not your first game in real estate. You've been playing the game for a long time. Uh, just on the single family side, all the multifamily side is a little bit more doors and a couple more zeros. Yeah. Right. So you felt very comfortable. Now, now let's talk about my screw up. This is so, <laughs> so Scott will ask you like, dude, we got this off. My, but I like, can't tell anybody. I'm like, yeah, I got it, man. I'm like, you got to yeah, get yeah. that. He told us, Corey, he told us, I'm going to give this to you, but do not share it with anybody. He was very specific. Do not share it. With do anybody. not share it. So what does Scott do? He shares it with me. <laughs> well, my and, mentor, my we're team, right? I, right. I think it was okay. And so we're doing this deal, and I'm like getting the numbers. I was like, dude, you got a deal. You got a deal here. And I'm already like thinking three steps ahead. And so I was like, I got to call this management company called MEB that's in Tucson, and I want to ask them about this property, see if they know it. And I was I was doing it to make just a um, an introduction just for Scott and Alaska. And so I call her name's um, Kim. Kim, yeah. I call Kim and I go, Kim, <laughs> hey, uh, you know, I got some good friends of my introduction she, and I'm talking talk about this property. She goes, and then she asked me, well, what property? And dude, I wasn't even thinking. And I go, Sierra Point. Now, Kim is sitting at that exact moment that I call. Guess where she's sitting? She's sitting in the office of Sierra Point. <laughs> and she goes, well, that's funny. I'm sitting right here in the office. I'm like, oh, my God. And then I'm like, oh, my God. Right. And so what does Kim do? She Kim immediately calls who? The seller. Not the broker, but the seller and says, you're going to sell Sierra Point? Now, this catch is on like wildfire. It goes right back to the broker. Broker calls Scott back up. And what does he say, Scott? So he, he was pissed. He was like, I told you not to tell anybody. You went out and share, sharing this deal. 
And I was like, no, 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 hang on, hang on. It didn't work that way. I, I swear. He was, I mean, he was pissed beyond belief. Oh my God. Hung up so on me. mad. He hung up the phone on me. And I said, I'm about to get you the LOI. He says, don't worry about it. And click, hung up. And now, I, now <laughs> oh, I can't get any better than this. This is such a great story. Everybody in the class was like, <laughs> oh my God. And I'm just, and I'm just there going, son of a bitch. Gosh, damn it. And I'm like, but I'm like, don't worry. Don't worry. We got this deal. I'm telling you, I got it. Like, hold on. And so now I'm calling back my girl. I'm like, Kim, you just screwed my deal, dude. I'm trying to like, and so she's running back, you know, and, and, and putting everything back together. And within a couple of hours, it, we kind of get somewhat back into square, don't we? Or it feels, yeah. He's, it's not perfect. No, but he's, he, he, he's okay with it. So, and, and so, and, and this is a big thing now, because I'm going to fast forward a little bit into this deal because brokers have short memories. Everybody write that down in your mind, underline it. Like they have very short memories. They will not remember anything about labor, which is what we were doing here. That was labor. All they want to know, they, all they remember is the baby you closed. Right. That's my analogy of having a baby. Right. The brokers never remember anything about the labor process. All, if you close, that's all they remember. Scott and Alaska closed. And they want to have another baby. Right. Every time. And so that's just a prereq of what happens, because that's exactly what happened with Scott. It took us a while to get him cool. But um, and so. Talk about let's, uh, the uh, going under contract process. What was that like for you guys? Because I, I think it's very normal that we had to wait so long and get it all negotiated. But you want to remember we'll talk about some of the things that we found in that process. Remember the uh, Leska, the uh, the um, the contract. Like that was a big deal, right? Yeah, a lot of redlining back and forth. I mean, I gosh, you want to say it took what maybe three weeks. Well, let's talk not- about the due diligence piece. Remember the due diligence yeah. item. That we yeah. found? Oh, the the non-refundable part? Yes, that's the part. Yeah, so we had to put up uh, $100,000 non-refundable mm-hmm. on acceptance. And then they want an additional $100,000 after 30, day, 30 days. So okay. it was $200,000. Mm-hmm. So now we set up a, a contract. We sent them our contract. And after like they looked at it, they're like, no, 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 no. We're just going to send you ours. And so my attorney's like, oh, all right, whatever. Well, we'll make it make the say the same thing. So they send over a new contract. And now this is what happens a lot of times. Um, the seller is really unengaged. He's like in China or I don't know. He's he's not paying attention. He's got art or he's got the broker. And the broker has kind of hired one of his buddies as an attorney and I don't think they ever looked at our either our LOI or the contract that we submitted. He just templated one up and shot it over. And here's what's the thing about how you like why you want to re- hire really good legal um, representatives. Because we're like, dude, we, we were trying to figure out a way to not have hard earnest money. Because we didn't want to go hard on day one. Right, guys? Remember that? And, yes. then, and then Wayne one day is going over with us. He's like, guys. <laughs> The way this contract's written, you're not hard. And we're like, what? He goes, yeah, yeah. It says it right here, very plain English, that uh, it's $100,000 earnest money of which, and it's non-refundable. All of $100 is non-refundable. The other $999,000 is refundable. (laughs) And it said it clearly in like a couple lines. It was like, he's like, Corey, so you got $100 really, truly hard. And we, I remember us, we're like, what? Do you, do and you it's think the that? zero. <laughs> yeah, we like, zero. do you think Do you think they know? He's like, well, it's their contract, and they sent it to us. And it's not redline, so let's just assume that they know what their contract says, and we'll sign it. And so that's what we did. We signed the contract. Um, with, And I, don't, I still don't think they even know what they signed, because we never had to use that. You know, we ended up wanting the deal, but – Truly, we were only hard for that first hundred thousand or hundred dollars of the first hundred thousand. I think that was a win for us, right? Because that 
it made us uh, a lot less uneasy as we went through it, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, what about due diligence? Uh, what was your uh, take on due diligence, Valeska, when we went to the property? Well, we went, walked around. We met the property manager um, that you work with, that Corey works with, um, and just did – well, this was the, the initial – Right, the initial one, not the yeah. one that they have to give everybody notice to go into every every unit. But we went around, checked the roof, checked the boiler system. I think she walked us around. Well, in fact, she did to you know one that was vacant. Um, walked around the property, so it was pretty much you know they had just fixed the roof, so the roof was in good shape. And I think you even bought a brought a your drone, right? And you mm -hmm. flew, yep, did flew that, up top yeah. there, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and what was your guys' uh, impression after we did due diligence, Scott? Like, you know, we looked at our deal. We looked at our numbers. What, would you, what did you guys feel after that? How would you feel? I, I thought it was a solid deal. You know, we, we end up, you know, doing that due diligence process. We end up walking through all 84 units. Yeah. Um, and I was surprised. I mean, they were in pretty good shape, I thought. Yeah, a couple, no, uh, couple hoarders, right? A couple of like. Yeah, there's a couple of hoarders, but you know, we've we fixed and flipped for a long time, so it wasn't anything new. And out of '84, I think there was maybe there was one really bad one hoarder, and there might have been one or two that you know were in pretty bad shape. But other than that, um, I thought it was in pretty good shape. Yeah, and uh, what we really found out was all the pets, right? Yeah. How many people had pets that weren't on a pet policy? Yeah, lots of pets. That's a lot of income, by the way. Yeah. And, and that's one that we're working on uh, actively obtaining right now. So uh, pretty cool. So that's what due diligence will do. So that's how we came out of that due diligence. Like, hey, um, I think this is exactly what we thought it was, right? There was no uh, big flags like, oh, my gosh, this is uh, this looks like it's a deal killer. And it, it, it was none of that. It was like, this is absolutely a deal. Yeah. And like Waleska mentioned, they had just put on that new roof. And I think it transferred, was it, a, a, I think, what, five or 10 year warranty on that? No, roof. like a five year warranty. Five year warranty. So, yeah, it was good. Yeah. So, like, so we're, we're feeling pretty happy at this point. Like, we, I think we got the right deal with the right problems. We all, they all seem like they're very fixable coming from that rehab business and the single family. It's like, okay, yeah, this seems pretty straightforward. Right. Yeah. Um, so then, so now we're raising money. So we got to raise money. Right. And you guys committed to raising a good chunk of money. I think you raised almost uh, one point five million dollars out of out of the gate. Your first time raising capital. And I, first of all, I want to give you a, a nice little golf clap here because not everybody does that. And you guys performed so well. And so I'm going to direct this to Willaska because Willaska is kind of like the hammer. She's like the financial you know, powerhouse. <laughs> And um, she was really, I think, more responsible for bringing that money in. Well, let's go. I want to get your opinion. You know, how did that how did that feel? How did it go? And well, it's I mean, you think you have all this money right? <laughs> right? until until it's actual time for them to, you know, to put it up. So, I mean, you know, I have been raising some money, private money for our flips. So I had that side of it, you know, had some contacts there. Um, friends and family and business associates that, you know, came through and I explained, you know, the deal, you know, the passive um, side of it. And yeah, it was, I mean, they had a lot of questions, a lot of learning, you know, a lot of things that I had needed to go back, ask, but all in all, I think, you know, it, it went pretty well. I mean, they were, I think, you know, it went amazingly well. I yeah. think, I think you you've done way better than I thought you were going to personally, right? And because everybody thinks it's going to be easy, but it does get a little hard. And then you start learning that it's a really a little bit different language than just a, um, hey, I'm going to give you a note deed of trust and give you some money, right, right? And give it to you back in you know three to six months. Yeah, it's yeah. very different to tell them it's going to be a five year hold, you know, and, and we're going to operate. We got to do all these things, and then you yeah. get your money back. Exactly. And so, so, yeah, those were different discussions for you um, to have. Um, but you had a lot of people say yes to that. Yeah, I mean, I had to prep them, talk to them a few times. You know, we went on your, the, the webinars. We all went on that. Um, so, yeah, it, it is a lot of, you know, 
while you're doing the due diligence, doing all that stuff, that's the time that you need to be talking to your investors, Yeah, you know, and, and kind of prepping and getting them ready because then they have to wire. And that's the hard part. Yeah, you know? that's the part. They'll, that's they'll the- soft commit. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then when it comes down to it, you know, Thanks it's really happen. hard. Yeah, um, then it's really hard or all of a sudden you don't hear from them. Um, but yeah, I, I lucked out. I mean, I was, I got a lot of them actually. Yeah. You know, I think you're very there. persistent. I think that's the piece yeah. that, you know, you could be, uh, not, not, a not too, pers- you know, like not a pain in the ass, but just enough persistent. And, um, I think the reason why you raise a lot of money is because of your integrity, you and Scott's, uh, integrity, uh, together as a team, that's usually what raises money more than anything else is oh. integrity. And um, like you say, a lot of this private money, you know, we've been working with these people for five years mm -hmm. and you are right. You give them their money back plus their interest. You're always, you know, updating them. And I think that goes a long way. And then you're, they're calling you, Hey, when's your next deal? You know, how can I get into your next deal? Because they know, you know, how do you feel about going into your next deal? Now you feel a lot more confident about what the process is and. Oh yeah. 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 It's night and day difference now. Yeah. yeah. Next it's, are, it's much easier talking to them, going through this whole process. It just, and now you guys are on the map. Yeah. Like, Oh, you guys are operators. You guys are doing big deals. Right. And yeah. so it, the, and it's funny how money they're always skeptical at first on your first one, but once they see you do it and you start kind of moving into that space, they're like, oh, yeah, well, we want, you know, because then it comes FOMO, fear of missing out. Oh, I'll, I, I got to jump on that deal. I don't want to get miss out because there may not be another one for, for a while. Right. So yeah. I, I thought you did an amazing job raising money. It's always um, how did it feel when you first when you get your first yes? Oh, no, it was. Yeah, it, it felt great. Obviously, it's like, you know. Yeah, yeah, count me in and, you know, not necessarily when they said yes, but when, when the wire came. When the wire <laughs> Two different, it's like a tail of Yeah, forget about right? when they said yes. It's like when the wire, I checked the bank account and it was in there, and I, that's when I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so, but yeah, no, it feels great that, you know, that they, that they trust you because at the, at the end of the day, right, it's the trust they have in you. To, to close and to, to know that, you know, that it's a good deal and that you're not putting their jeopardy, their investment, their, you know, savings. Um, you know, some of these were my friends, their savings in jeopardy. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. Real money, right. For, right, for, for yeah. real things. Yeah. So now that we've closed, um, or really kind of go right up to a week, right before we close where we're now, we're no, we know we're fully funded. We have everything we need. Everything's in place. What was your guys' perspective then? Like, what was that feeling? Scott, I'll let you go first. Well, being in real estate for a while, um, you still worry until you get the final close. Right. Right, because it's, it's never done until it's done. So although we had all that, you know, lined up and ready to go, uh, you know, it was, it was it took a while, a lot of work. Oh, yeah, um, we didn't even talk about the loan. We got to talk about well, the loan a little you bit. You didn't talk loan all the insurance two days before closing, Corey. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, let's hit that. Let's start with the insurance first. <laughs> so, so I was saying, you know, we we were ready to close and then the insurance popped up. And um, there was a mess up on the insurance. And it's Oh, like, that's right. Remember, do, you know, do you remember what it was? Uh, they had the quoted it under the previous... Um, property manager's umbrella policy. Yeah. So we had asked for a referral because uh, we were having trouble finding regular insurance for this property. So we said, hey, let's go to um, whoever is insuring it now. And so that was under ME, uh, MEBs was the property that come, a management company that was managing it before, prior to us. And so we got a referral. And so we called that. And he was just assuming that it was under MEB's master policy. And we didn't find this out till like two days before closing. Now this, and, and we actually, that almost derailed us big time because we had to ask for like a, a week extension, wasn't it? Yeah, well, what the problem was is the broker calls and says, um, you're not getting another extension. The seller won't give an extension past Friday. And if you do go past Friday, he's going to want more money. And I was livid. Mm-hmm. I was too. So that was how it was set up. But in the end, I, I think we still got to close that. We got to close that Friday. 
Yeah, but we still got to do this through Monday. But we got an extension till the next Monday, right? So yeah. Um, and sometimes, and that was made. I remember I'm making that call to the broker, and I gave him. I remember I spoke my mind. I think I said a couple cuss words, right? Like, what the f is this, right? Like, we're trying to put this deal together, and like this is something totally beyond our control. It's in black and white. Like the insurance guy put it under the policy. No one caught it until now. And so like they were working every day to get it done the lender. Everybody wants to close. And at this point, it's like, dude, the seller wants his money. We're right here. Don't be an idiot and go be a deal killer. Be a deal maker guy, um, which he did. Now, I'll, I will say this in a way, the broker's doing his job. He doesn't yeah. work for us. He yeah. works for the seller. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I always say, well, if you got a buyer that wants to buy and a seller that wants to sell, a deal will usually come together. But it was a little bit stressful because we, you know, like what was up for us, we could have lost $200,000 of our earnest money. I mean, it was, there was a lot of risk at, at that moment for us. Well, and an additional 50 grand for an extension of a day or two. Yeah. And like, we weren't going to do that. That, was that like, wasn't earnest money. That was money in the seller's pocket. Yeah. He just, he didn't want additional or he wanted a fee. And we're like, screw that, dude. Like, come on, don't be stupid, you know? And, you know, don't be a, don't be a D-I-C-K, right? Like, we want to do future business with you. Now, and, and again, uh, that broker, he forgets all of that now, right? You guys went and had lunch with him again right after we closed? He doesn't yeah. remember. He doesn't remember all that. You guys were his friends, right? <laughs> he's he's once, excited about his new car he's bought. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the way it is, man, because they, they, they really, they, they get in these transactions. And it's just, it's just business. It's just the heat of the transaction. Once, if you close, all sins are forgiven from the father. Right. And so it's, it's really weird how that works. You think like, God, this guy's an a-hole or now he hates us. And he's like, no, no, no let's do our next deal. Yeah, that was great. We did. It was awesome. You guys did exactly what you said you're going to do minus the hiccups, all the stuff along the way. Cause we have one more, one more, uh, ugly. And that remember that Willesca, that was when, um, we had a loan and then we didn't have a loan. Right. And that, what was, that was from, um, occupancy. Yeah. So talk about that for a minute. So we were, we were agency. It was going to be a Freddie loan mm -hmm. and, when they checked all the all the um, leases, there were there were some that were thirty days behind. Um, yeah, I don't even think they were thirty. I think they were like ten or fifteen days. Right, they, and this is like you know, of course COVID still going, moratorium still in place, and their manager actually went on maternity leave. Their property manager, and nobody ever came back. And so a lot of these people that were you know less than thirty days continued to be late. And so nobody was checking up on them. And then when they did the audit, of course, now they're 60 plus days late, which if they would have had their management in place, they could have been getting the help that's out there for people that, you know, are having problems with their. Yeah. Do the paperwork. So, do the paperwork. Cause there's money. There was lots of money in, uh, is what County are we in? That's in uh, Pima, right? Pima, Pima, yeah, Pima yeah. County that they would to get the rent assistance, but right. someone had to help them do the paperwork. Right. And no so one of course, loans. yeah, they figure it out. The loan falls through. Now we can't do agency loan. We have to now, now we're working on a bridge loan to try to get this all, you know. So, and that was horrible so because that happened at like, so it happened right after we went hard, we had about 30 days left to close and we're all aiming to close. And the, the, Freddie was doing the kind of their final, like, where are we at? And the question was like, Hey, we got to look at these because now we're about 90 days from where we went under contract to now we're getting ready to finally close 30 days later. And um, those 15 or 20 day lates were now 60 and 90. And there was like seven of them. Right. Yeah. And seven of them on an 84 unit property is like 12, 13%. So now we were at 90, you know, 7%. But they're like, no, those are, we're going to consider those vacants. So now we're at like 87% or 85 <laughs> And it was not good enough to get a Freddie loan. And that 12.5 that we spent, remember we had to spend 12,500 to get that loan? 
Done. Gone. Yep. Gone. Yep. I like the wind. So then you got to go hire a bridge loan, which it's wants a lot more, yeah, a lot more seventy five thousand dollars. Yeah. To go to the deal, and I remember talking to him, and you're like, "What the hell's going on?" Right? I mean, that was like, "Whoa, wait, what's what's our options?" Like, and you don't really have any because we're now we're under contract. We're so far into the game that we've we've got to perform. Um. But we went back to the seller and they then, you know, their management company, their Kim, which was the, you know, she would be like, what, the up, above Regi- the a regional. Yeah, yeah a regional. A regional. She, she went in pushing. and they, yeah. And then they started cracking the whip and then they started getting all the money. I yep. mean, they were giving us updates because they knew they had messed up. Yeah. You know, so. So, but we were still under contract. We were still at risk with our money. But um, at the end of the day, and here's what's crazy is that bridge loan is probably going to be a better deal for us. If we, if, because we got a, um, a two year bridge with, I think, a one year extension. Yeah, one year. Yeah. And um, like we're working pretty fast right now on, the, on this property. We're already doing the exterior stuff. But it'll probably take us a year and a half to finish all the, the turns on the units that we're going to do. And then we'll be set up with a way more additional income to get the right. Um, we might be able just to do a refi and cash out all our investors from the lift that we're going to do with all these properties. Cause the cool thing, there was still a lot of, there's a lot of meat on this bone. Yeah. And Scott, you want to talk about like, you know, what we're going to get additionally in rents when we, when we do this lift. Yeah. So I, I think when um, we first looked at the property there, one bed, one bath, I think it was like, around 700 square feet. I think they were getting, what was it like around 800 bucks a yep. month. Mm-hmm. And then uh, after we do the lift on those, I think we're going to be close to a thousand dollars on those. Yes. Um, I think a thousand 30 or something like that. Um, well, what the, in speaking with the property manager where we had priced the rents after the rehab, they've even bumped up a little higher than that now. Yeah. The great thing called inflation. The market keeps going up there. Yeah. I mean, we got that deal in a very good deal. In fact, when we were talking to the broker, he said, you know, you could flip this now and make, I mean, we got it for $91 a door where now, what did he say? Like 115, if not more. Yeah. So from yeah. February that we had it under contract and I mean, just a few months, not only that prices have kept going up and, you know. But inflation's the- going crazy. So rent growth is going crazy which is creating, and we still have very, really low interest rates. So it's a um, good for us, right? We're going to do probably better than we expected. Better than um, we expect. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And so that's the value of putting yourself in the game. If you guys wouldn't have challenged yourself and just said, I'm going to go do it. I'm going to take the time to go out and have a, a breakfast. Um, we, we wouldn't be doing this deal. Like that was, that was the spark to, to kind of ignite and catch you on fire. Right. Yeah. Um, Overall experience from this first deal, um, what, what, what's your general takeaways, Valeska? And I'll ask you the same thing, Scott. Well, you know, again, it's a great experience, great learning. Your first deal is always the hardest, but once you do it, it just gets you in the game, right? It, it really, I mean, there's so many things that go on in each deal that you learn from that, you know, that then you're on your next deal that you're looking for, you know, any red flags, um, but it, it's great. It's a great learning experience in every aspect, right? Dealing with the broker, dealing with the underwriting, dealing with your investors that are going to bring in the money, you know, the due diligence, it's just a lot of moving parts, but definitely you learn so much from your first deal. And then the next deal, I mean, we've been underwriting, you know, now deals and we were actually just on a, on, you know, for like on a final um, on a final round, yeah, it, it's just completely different, right? The way your experience on the second deal is just completely different than on the first. So, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a great experience. Very cool. So you're off the races, trying to get some more under contract and keep going forward. So yep. it doesn't take a lot, you know, two to three, four deals a year on the multifamily side can, uh, can change your life. And you do that five years in a row. It does change your life. I promise. Yeah, for sure. Scott, what about you? You know, my, my takeaway on this, Corey, was, you know, getting the first deal done. Now, when I reach out to brokers, 
I tell them, hey, we just recently closed on 84 units. That's in my email. And the response is totally different. And when we talk to brokers in the Tucson market, they all know that property. They all know the broker we dealt with. And so it gives us a lot of credibility with other brokers now because they see we closed on a property. They're familiar with it. And the response from the broker to us now is totally different. They're like, you guys, you guys can perform. You guys can play this game. Um, so that was my, that's the takeaway afterwards. But, you know, um, for, you know, your people that are listening, I would say also, um, you know, if you haven't done your first deal yet, then I, I would certainly recommend getting a mentor and um, working with a mentor or a, um, you know, a group that can help you get that first deal done. Even in my single business, single family residence business, I had a mentor and education. So education and mentor, if you don't have that, I would recommend finding someone to do that. Cool. Cool. Well, I uh, appreciate you guys allowing me to, to help you on your way. And it's been really cool to watch that growth and the journey to come to the dark side and start strapping on some uh, some multifamily investing uh, units. And it's just, uh, this is one deal of many for you guys, I know. And here's what's cool is a lot of times it's just you need help on the first one. Like, that's it. You just have to see it done one time. And from there, most people can learn to fly on their own, especially competent people like uh, you, Scott, and, and Waleska. Like, you guys saw the game fully. And you're like, okay, we got it. We got everything that we need. And yeah, we can still, we'll go out and we can still make us some mistakes, but we pretty much know what we need to do now. Yeah. yeah. And, and then the world's your oyster. And you proved that you can raise capital. <laughs> yeah. So uh, super excited. Um, guys, if people want to learn about your guys' company, uh, Greenstone Capital, and, and, and want to get a hold of you guys, um, how do they, how do they, what's the best way to get a hold of you guys? You can reach me. Um, my email is Waleska, W-A-L-E-S-K-A dot Iglesias, I-G-L-E-S-I-A-S -S at gmail. Okay. Um, so yeah, always checking it. So yeah, feel free to reach out anytime for any questions, any help that I can be of. Yeah. So. Well, you guys are doing amazing things. I wish nothing but the but more success. It was a lot of fun doing this deal with you guys. Uh, you know, the guys, uh, everybody listening on the podcast, this concludes our three-part series of the good, bad, and ugly of Sierra Point. Um, lots of fun. Uh, hopefully you got a lot out of Scott and Waleska's, uh, you know, how they interpreted the deal uh, of them going through it for the first time and really doing everything right with a couple curveballs that were thrown at us. I think uh, those curveballs are probably the most like, wow, that that stuff happens. Um, and it does. And we saw and we got through it and we still closed and the broker still cares. And so that is an amazing story. Guys, thanks for jumping on. Guys, uh, if you're listening right now, you know, real estate doesn't happen by chance. It happens with a choice. And you've got to put it in your mind that you want to move forward. If you believe it, you can achieve it. And your paradise is possible. <laughs>